Come on. God is so good. In your homes right now, just declare, God is good. All the time. I want to just join with all those watching right now, wherever you're at right now. I'm going to ask you to do something. I want to pray, but I want you to, to position yourself, not as a person just sitting in your house, not as a person just sitting um, in your car, driving, wherever you're listening, but actually realize if you are a believer that you're seated in heavenly places. So I'm actually going to ask you to engage right now that you are actually not even worried right now in 2021 about whatever's happening politically or, or pandemically or whatever. You're actually now just focusing on what God is doing in heaven. Can we do that? Come on. Can we do that, people watching? Come on. Right now, I just ask Lord Jesus, like God, shift our perspective right now. Lord, I thank you. We've been in your presence in worship. I pray we wouldn't come out of that, Lord God. It's a lifestyle of worship. It's a lifestyle of being before the throne. It's a lifestyle of growing in relationship with you, Jesus. I pray today, Lord God, that we could encourage the body of Christ to walk out in who they're called to be, to be sons and daughters, faithful ones, burning ones, because that's what you're called to be. So Lord, we thank you, Holy Spirit, just come. I invite your spirit to even, even go to another, even make us more aware of your presence. Increase it right now. Come on, have an expectation. If you haven't grabbed your miracle during what the, the transition and in worship, grab it now. Because you know what happens as we worship Jesus? It can't help it, but the atmosphere changes. Because your spirit is coming alive. Your spirit is coming alive. It's starting to, it's reality of heaven is coming more and more. And your mind and your his body realizes that it needs to completely submit to the body, to the Holy Spirit, to the kingdom of heaven. Come on, grab it. Grab it. It's your choice, you guys. Like Brent was saying, it's your choice. Get on fire. Choose to get on fire. If you don't wait for another man, if anything we can learn in this, in this season is we don't have access that easy to come to meetings and people that lay hands on them. It's time for the church to grow up. Come on. God uses things and he wants the church to grow up. It's time to learn to lay hands on yourself. Whoa. Yes, Jesus. Lord God. Whoa. Jesus wants to touch you. Holy Spirit wants to touch you. But you need to learn to stir yourself, to light the match. It's a choice every day. And actually, that's what I'm talking about today, is it's a choice every day. It's a life is a process. And it's a process and a journey. Salvation is a process. But we, but we have to, I'm going to tell you something the Lord told me, I'm going to right from the beginning here, give yourself a break. Church, stop getting so religious and give yourself a break because it's taking you out of learning to process with the Lord. Stop, that's the enemy. God always pulls you up. He always speaks life to you. He's always saying you can, you're called to better. If you're hearing anything else, it's not the Lord. He's always saying, come up here. Come up here. Come up now. Like Chris saw. He was talking about in Revelations. The, this, chapter 4, Revelation. Come up here. Come up now. That's an invitation for the church to come and experience heaven on earth today. Oh, I'm excited. Oh, man. <sighs> come on. We... It, I'm telling you, just there's something. I'm gonna, the presence of God is here, but it's in your home. It's wherever you are. Why? Because you're learning in process to realize that it's your choice just to come aware of Him. It's simpler than you think, guys. I love to tell people. I remind. It's simpler. Don't let your mind get in the way. He paid the price so you can experience Him right now. Right now. It's if you're if you've been in sin, repent. And turn the other way and accept the gift right now. Philippians 2, 12 to 18 in the Passions Translation. It says, this is Paul, My beloved ones, just like you've always listened to everything I've taught you in the past, I'm asking you now to keep following my instructions. As though I were right there with you, now you must continue to make the new life. This is salvation. These are people that just got saved. Following my... Um, you must continue to make this new life manifested as you live in the holy awe of God. When you start dwelling on the fact that you're actually in front of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, you guys, when you, he doesn't stop watching. He continually is with you. He says he never leaves you nor forsakes you. No matter what you're doing, he wants to encounter you. That's what Paul's saying. Which brings you trembling into his presence. Trembling. Church, I encourage you. God is a God of love, but he's the God of all. Come on. 
Don't get familiar with a God you hardly know. But he wants you to get familiar in relationship. Come on. There's the two sides. He wants to draw, but continue to realize, even as you grow in the process of coming closer to him, not to forsake the fact that he is God. He is God. You know what the biggest, the Hebrews taught, the biggest difference between you and God is the fact that you can't fully understand him. That's what makes him God. He is bigger than you, but he wants to encounter you with his bigness, and he wants to make you big. Oh, Jesus Oh, God. God will continually, oh, verse 13. This is verse, Philippians 2, verse 13. God will continually revitalize you, implanting you with the passion to do what pleases him. You guys, that's my prayer. When you read that verse over here, declare that over yourself, that he would put the passion in you, the hunger in you. What does the Bible say? It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by his spirit. We need the Holy Spirit in us so that we can be passionate. And the word promises it. We've been sharing, teaching even at the school the power of the word. We have a school ministry, and we've been talking about the fact that it's a lot simpler. And these are scripture verses that some of us need to just learn. If you're not feeling passionate, well, why? Because this Bible just says he continually revitalizes you, implanting you, that's putting in you, within the passion to do what pleases him. So if you want it, you can have it. So don't blame him, and don't blame your neighbor. Next verse says, live a cheerful life without complaining or division among yourselves. Whoa, that's a big one for all of us. I'm preaching it myself. That's the fun part. It's easier when you just preach it yourself. Uh, for, then you will see, for then you will be seen as innocent, faultless, and pure children of God, even though you live in the midst of a brutal, perverse culture. For you will appear among them as shining lights in the universe, holding out the words of eternal life. You guys, that's our job. Come on, in this season, that's our job. I gotta read that again. For then, okay, first of all, live a cheerful life. It's your choice. I've been, some people may say I've been getting a little more harsh with some people around me, but I can't, I just feel like I wanna see people with breakthrough. So I'm getting on top of people when I start, they start telling me all the negative, the negative. I'm like, hey, this is what God's doing. Right? Because I don't want you to bring me down. We need to be cheerful. You can do and move. With the power of God, you can change the atmosphere. You can. So if you, I'm telling you right now, if you're meeting with people every day, say in your workplace, and they're constantly like negative, negative, you need to make a shift right here in your mind. And say that I carry the kingdom of heaven, and I'm going to shift the atmosphere, and at first, and I'm not a victim. I'm not a victim. I choose. Come on. For what happens then? Without complaining or division among yourselves, for then you will be seen as innocent, faultless, and pure children of God, even though you live in the midst of a brutal and perverse culture. Wait a minute, he just removed our excuse. Paul just removed our excuse. We have no excuses no matter what's going on around us, no matter whatever junk is, you're called to be a light. For you will appear among them as shining lights, come on, in the universe. Wow, that's a pretty big statement right there. The, the word universe is a pretty big thing. We're not going to be just shining lights here. You're going to be shining lights everywhere. Come on. Holding out the words of eternal life. I haven't labored among you for nothing, for your lives are the fruit of my ministry, Paul says, and he'll be glorious boast of the unveiling of Christ. But I will rejoice, even if my life is poured out. Come on, guys. This is what needs to be our prayer. Poured out like a liquid offering to God. That needs to be our prayer. Man, that is a key. You want to get, you want to move in power, you want to move in signs and wonders, you want to be close to the Lord. This is Paul's giving you keys right here. You get around people that you want to, that you see and are living amazing lives. This is one of their keys. I've watched in our house people like Brent and Sherry, they have given up their lives, they have paid a price. The Bill Johnsons, the Chris Valtons, the, the of Bethel that cover the house here too. Those people behind the scenes say that's their cry. You get around Brent, that's his cry. His cry is pour my life out. No matter if it takes the cost. Come on. Because it was a liquid offering. Your sacrificial surrender lives in faith. Come on. We need to stop worrying so much about ourselves and realize we're actually called to live a surrendered life of faith. 
I'm not, I'm not saying God doesn't want to bless you. I'm not saying you can't have a good looking life from the world because God wants you. You're shining bright. God wants people to see the blessed people. Come on, he, when he took the Israelites out of Egypt, he gave them the gold, the silver. Come on, he believes in that, but they were, you have to come to a place of surrender where that's not your identity when it's actually the identity is in Christ. And so no matter what that happens to me, you should rejoice in a static celebration with me. Come on, we gotta get joyful. We gotta get excited. We gotta lay down our lives as an offering. God is asking for our yeses again. Wait a minute, he never stopped. No, he never stopped. Our life is a process of yeses. That's what I'm gonna be preaching on today. I always do that. I end up giving my whole message right there. He is giving, literally, our yeses bring us through the process of salvation. I'm going to prove it, too, because life is a journey. Come on, don't we all have a desire to live out the stuff God's put in us? Come on, we know it. I meet with people. What's the question? I hear so often, what's my calling? What's my calling? Your calling is to serve the King of kings and Lord of lords. It's to lay down your life and walk a journey of life, and every day when he says something, you follow and then you won't miss your calling. I've heard so many, in the charismatic church specifically, there's constant this question, I think I'm gonna miss it. What if I miss it? If you say yes to God every day, you're never gonna miss it. And it's gonna look a lot better than you ever planned. No, that's the problem, too much, guys. We, we, we get all this stuff given to us and we're trying to make something happen instead of actually being in the journey of the process. We're trying to get the A to B when there's a lot of A, one, two, three, four, five, in between. Come on. Sometimes our yeses are just showing up to church, well, watching this morning on, on, on YouTube or on Facebook. Come on. Some of your yeses is that you're embarrassed that you're connected to the charismatic movement and you won't share this broadcast. Oh, wow. Sorry, guys. Oh, Jesus, sorry. Oh, oh, Jesus. No, but we have to. It is. I'm telling you, in a, and this is almost weird because I'm saying right here. For me, even in this journey of COVID and everything being more alive and churches being shut down, one of my yeses is, is not holding back because of my family members that are watching. And you're going to be watching right now. So you just heard that. I can't live that way. I had to repent because that's worrying about what people think of me. That's not laying myself as a liquid offering unto the Lord. I'm only burning like bread to the matches. Light me again. <sighs> oh, this message actually came out of a out of a Christmas carol. That's my favorite one. Because I'm going to talk about Mary here. You know the song, Mary, Did I Know? God's been after me for months. He's like, the message is in that song. I'm like, Lord, that's weird. And he said, no, look at Mary's life. She didn't know the process she was about to join. I'm going to read this right now. But hurry, hurry, I'll go. Luke 1, 26 to 38 in the Passion Translation. That's Luke 1, 26 to 20, 38. During the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, the angel of Gabriel was sent from God's presence to an unmarried girl named Mary living in Nazareth in a village of Galilee. She was engaged to a man named Joseph. You guys know the story. It's the Christmas story, right? Gabriel appeared to her and said, Rejoice, beloved young woman. For the Lord is with you, and you are anointed with great favor. Now, before I go any further, I want to set something up here. Because that's the Christmas story. And growing up in the church, we read that section really fast. We're reading. Mary had no clue what was going on at this moment. No, just like you that are watching, those who are part of this, there are situations in your life that you have no idea what next week's going to look like. You don't know. You've been told that great things are going to happen. Mary's heard the, whole, the, the history of the Israelites and the, all this amazing stuff about Moses. But, and she knows the Messiah is coming, but she has no idea what's about to happen. Her life is about to shift. Mary was, says, Rejoice, beloved young woman, for the Lord is with you. You are anointed with great favor. Mary was deeply troubled over these words of the angel and bewildered over what that this may mean for her. Again, she didn't know, guys. Sometimes we read scripture going, oh, it's Mary. Mary, the mother of Jesus. Mary had no idea. She's troubled. An angel showed up. If an angel shows up in your house, if you're not a little bit wondering what's going on, I don't know if you're alive. Unless you have a lot of angels. I don't know. Um, but the angel reassured her, saying, do not yield to your fear. Oh, I love that. 
Do not yield to your fear. Church, don't yield to the fear at this time. Don't yield to conspiracies and all that. Yield to what God's doing. Come on. Do not yield to your fear, Mary, for the Lord has found delight in you and has chosen to surprise you with a wonderful gift. When I was saying this, the Lord said, church, he wants to surprise you daily with incredible gifts. Oh, I'm not Mary. Mary's the one that gives birth to the Son of God. Man, God doesn't, I don't even think God looks at things like that. He, he loves to give us all give big gifts. He actually believes just as much in you as he believes in Mary. Come on, can you believe that? Come on. You will become pregnant with a baby boy, and you are to name him Jesus. He'll be supreme, and he'll be known as the son of the highest. And the Lord will enthrone him as king on the throne of the ancestor David. He will reign as king of Israel forever, and his reign will have no limit. Mary said, but how could this happen? I'm still a virgin. That's how the supernatural, that's a good question. Did you, first of all, we're allowed to ask questions. It's good to ask questions. You want to know a big key from encountering supernatural things? Ask questions. It's a relationship. Constantly ask the Lord questions. Ask people that have experienced things questions. When we start thinking we know it or we think we need to do this journey all alone, we get stuck. Ask the questions. <sighs> Gabriel answered, the spirit of holiness will fall upon you, and almighty God will spread a shadow of power over you in a cloud of glory. I declare the spirit of holiness over the church. That's another key. You want to experience things. Come on. God, oh, this is off topic a little bit, but it's, we need, I think it was Chris Walton shared it in one of our winsome videos. I'm telling you, our school rocks, and our videos that we get from Bethel are incredible that the students listen to. And he shared this, or maybe it's Eric Johnson shared it, and he said, God is not so much concerned with you just trying not to sin to not sin. He actually wants you to be pure in heart to see God, so if in sin you can't see what God's doing. He wants you to go after it, and it changes your reason of going, ah, try not to sin, try not to sin. Instead, I want to see what God's doing, so I'm going to live a pure and spotless life. I'm going to strive for holiness with his help. Remember, guys, if, you're, if you need holiness, don't go start just trying to cut things out of your life. Actually, ask the Lord to give you the grace. Yeah. Yeah. Ask for where your process is. For everyone, it's different, too. Yeah. Oh. <sighs> this is why the child born to you will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. What's more, your aged aunt Elizabeth has also become pregnant with a son. The barren one is now in, in her sixth month. Not one promise for God, from God is empty of power. Come on, if he's giving you a promise, this is the word of God, so you can read it for yourself. Come on, the word of God is prophesying over you. Come on, not one of his, it's a, every one of his words is covered in power. This is, oh wow. <laughs> nothing, is impo- <laughs> nothing is impossible with God. I'm telling you right now. But, it, but oh, I just, nothing is impossible with God, but get counsel. Come on. No. Nothing's impossible with God. We serve a God that does miracles. He does things in the supernatural. He does things that blows our mind. But we need to be on a journey of the process with a community. We need people, elders around, people you can speak to. Why? Because a lot of people trying to make it to plan B, and plan B isn't even biblical. Did I dare say that? Brent's and Sharon shared this many times. When they, the Lord said, go, go on a boat, go off somewhere. Was it se- seven years? Seven years, you guys. Seven years you had to wait. If you know Brent, he doesn't like waiting seven years. Trust me. We don't like waiting. But I'm telling you, and God could have. He's the God of the impossible. He could have dropped the boat right in front of him. But he was in process. And if you talk to him, you'll find out that there's a reason for process. Because you grew in that season. Oh. oh, this is the part right here. Then Mary's response. I want you to hear this because this is what we need to live by. She said in big words, yes, I will be the mother of the Lord. Now again, she has no understanding what that really means. She's giving her yes in faith. That is what God is asking you every day. Give me your yes. Give me your yes. Yes. I will be the mother of your Lord, and this is the key with the yes, as his servant. Yes, we're friends of God, yes, but that's, we lay our lives down for the Lord. 
Our yes is no matter what it looks like. I accept whatever he has for me. May everything you've told me come to pass. And the angel left her. Are we giving our yeses like that? Are we speaking yes, whatever you say, Lord? You guys, sometimes our yeses just look like open your house up for a support group. Sometimes our yeses, what I was bringing up, is big and crazy, get on a boat. But sometimes yes is just to get up and get in devotions at six in the morning. Sometimes your yes is to come and mow the lawn at the church. Whoa! You know what's interesting? I was telling Brett when, they, when Jeremy shared that testimony. You know who found that money, that, the money outside on Friday, on Friday night? The guy that mowed the lawn two days before. As soon as I heard that, I thought the Lord said, hey, isn't that amazing? Because he rewards. Does it, does it matter if you reward or not? No, that wasn't his heart. If you know the guy that did it, he ain't doing it for money. He actually said, hey, here's the money. I think somebody lost it. The guy's so innocent. I love it. Most people would have pocketed it. But I'm telling you, yeses look different for everybody. Yes can be just being at the supermarket and you have the inclination to talk to somebody, just pray for somebody. That's the moment of yes. But I'll tell you something. What happens in your yes, it brings you to your next point of needing to say yes. No, you guys, we come to our place of salvation and we say we've been saved, but it doesn't, that's just when the fun starts. That's actually the easy part. The easy part of saying yes at first, it's living out salvation. And I'm telling you folks right now, it's not that easy. But it's okay because he's with you the whole time. Because he actually wants relationship. Who has relationship with somebody really close that was, that's always been easy? That's not a real relationship. You probably actually don't really know them that well. <sighs> Dude, time, I'm just going to... So, so Mary, Joseph have this baby. This baby, you guys, again. This baby, she delivers it like a normal woman would. Guess what? She had to say yes again. Why? Because the baby cried like a baby. The baby pooped like a baby. Jesus was a normal baby. Well, not no, with the spirit of whatever you want to go there. But she, to her, it just was like a baby. And she had to go back and say, I said yes then, and I have to believe a yes again. And then shepherds show up. Wise men show up. She had to say yes. Do you think that was just not, do you think that's weird? Imagine, I've had, my wife's had three kids. Shepherds didn't show up in the, in the hospital. As much as we go, well, that's cool. That would have proven it. That's like, that's like a prophet calling you out in a meeting. Just because a prophet calls you out doesn't make it any easier. You still have to say yes, and that's the problem. A lot of people have a lot of words, but they never said yes. They think that, oh, you're called to be going to the, to the nations. Well, you still have to choose to say yes. You have to choose to get a heart that's ready to go to the nations. You have to choose to get up at 3 in the morning and drive an hour into Vancouver and get on a plane for 13 hours, 15 hours, and jump another plane, and then, then you go to Russia like bread. And, and you have to choose to say yes when you don't feel like it. Oh, man. Everyone wants to fix this glory out there. It's the glory thing to be called. You guys, do what God says to do. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. Some of you just need to pick up. You get a word about business, start dreaming with him. You get a word about your children coming to the Lord to be somebody powerful, help raise them up. It's not like a, so often we have this idea, oh, they, they just, it's going to happen. No. The, if you study the prophetic, it's poten God's potential over you. Brent's taught on it. You can get a message. There's potential and there's also uh, absolutes. But quite often, these words we get are a lot of our potential because they come with a yes or a no. It comes with a cost. So what happens? Then, all, then Joseph gets a dream, and they're like, we have the Son of God. These weird things are happening. We go, and then we have to flee to Egypt. Do you think, you guys, you have to, we sometimes just need to look at things. Do you think she would have been like, Oh, yeah, that's awesome. Well, let's just pick it up. People want to kill my son. No, they had to say yes again. They said yes again, not knowing what this looks like. Like that song, Mary, did you know that someday he would see the blind, see the deaf? He's not seeing that yet. He's a baby. But she still said yes. They said yes. Luke 2, 46 to 51. I'm just going to look it up. 
It's when Jesus goes into the, he's 12 years old and he's lost. Well, Mary and Joseph think he's lost. Jesus ain't lost. And what's going on? He's hanging out in the temple at a young age teaching them things. He's not a normal kid. So again, realize he's 12. How many weird things were happening where Mary and Joseph, as a parent, had to go, oh, okay, yes, God, I give you my yes. Imagine, oh, man, being a parent, when you come back and you're all freaked out, your child's missing, and he tells you this. Um, um, so it says in 48, his parents were shocked to find him there, and Mary scolded him, saying, son, your father and I have searched for you everywhere. We have been worried, sick over, not finding you. Why would you do this to us? Jesus said to them, Why would you need to search for me? This is a kid telling them, okay? Those who are parents understand this a little better. Didn't you know that it would be necessary for me to be here in my father's house consumed with him? Mary and Joseph didn't fully understand what Jesus meant. That's key right there. But they gave their yes again. We don't see the next scripture saying, Mary and Joseph said, screw you, go to the, leave you. No! They said, we don't understand, but we gave our yes when the angel showed up. We gave our yes when Joseph gave his yes when his wife was pregnant and he didn't do nothing about that. Come on. We read scripture, but we need to let it come alive and realize what's really going on. Because life is a process of yeses. We don't often understand what's going on in our process. We often don't. But when you give your yes, you're going to get there faster. I'm telling you. It's yes after yes. I look sometimes, I'm like, what in the world were we doing right now? In my own life. And the Lord, he could see it way clearer afterwards. You don't know it in the moment, but it's the yeses. It's the yeses. But he's constantly asking for more. Why? Because he wants you to experience more. John 2, 1 to 11. Now on the third day, Jesus' mother went to a wedding feast in Galilee, village of Canaan. Jesus and his disciples were invited to the banquet, but with so many guests, they ran out of wine. We know the story. And when Mary realized that she came to Jesus and asked, they have no wine, can't you do something about it? This is John 2, 1 to 11. See, this is the cool thing. is when you say yes to God, when you build history with yeses with God, you build history, and it, there's something to do with his heart. You begin to have that relationship that is so real that he, he goes, ask. Ask, right? He loves it. From our understanding, there was no other miracles at this point. I don't know what happened at home, but there was no other miracles. I don't know how she knew he could do this stuff, but that's your own study. Um, they have no wine. Can't you do something about it? Jesus replied, my dear one. Don't you understand that if I do this, it'll change nothing for you, but it'll change everything for me? You guys, that's a whole teaching right there. You guys, Mary is shifting history right now. You guys can shift history. Do you guys realize that? You can shift history. Your yes shifts history. We, as a body, the more yeses at win with Windward is the faster we're going to experience stuff. Because I can tell you we're all desiring to experience the glory of God. We're, experience, we're desiring to see the region set free. We're desiring to see people come to Jesus. We're desiring for miracles. But if you're going to wait for one or two of us to stay lit up on fire, it's going to be a while. For real, come on. We need to. We need to. People, God is in you. He's not just in bread. He's not just in other leaders. He's not just in Bill Johnson. He's in you. Yes, some of these people just said yes more. Come on. And we're all different. Don't judge other people's yeses. Because you might not be being asked the same thing. No, I, I, that's speaking from my own experience. Oh, well, I'm better because I said yes to that. I'm, not, I'm taking that out of my life. No, 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 no. Don't start comparing. That's the, comparing you always lose. That you're, everyone's on their own journey. I know leaders that will, I know leaders that literally watch a certain movie, they're clean movies, but there's certain movie they'll watch and they have had encounters. And these leaders over here have watched the same movies and they think it's demonic. But God told them both. Is one of them not really hearing from God? I don't believe so. I believe they've both been called in different things. Our yeses look different. 
Oh, I just heard of a, an, uh, a guy, a ministry, uh, a minister, I won't even use his name. For 46 years, he's been moving, around, going around the world doing signs and wonders. It's amazing. He's amazing. He, well, you know what he just shared? He shared about a year ago, he's watching just a normal movie on Netflix. Just a normal movie. He said, nothing wrong with it. And he's watching, and the Lord says, clearly says, hey, cancel your subscription. This, but 46 of following and saying yes, he didn't argue. He actually quickly turned it off. He said, and he got a hold of his administrator, and he said, hey, can you remove my Netflix? And he said, why? He says, I don't know. God said to. But what the next thing he said, he said, but that's not, he's not telling everyone to get rid of Netflix. That was his journey. Sometimes God will just ask you something just to see where your heart is. He just wants to know. Will you give a yes again today? That's what he's saying. Will you say yes again? Will you lay it down again? Will you realize and be honest with yourself where you haven't been saying yes? <sighs> again, Jesus has not been moving to miracles. His mom just said, can you do something about a situation? You know what's cool about the situation? It doesn't really affect Jesus in the sense of the natural. And Mary, she's actually not running this wedding from I understand. But she cares for something, and she's putting a demand on her yeses, or her demand on her relationship, which I think God likes. My hour of unveiling my power has not come. It's going to change everything. You guys, it got changed so much that I'm reading it right now. No. Mary right here just changed history in the record books. But what does happen she doesn't even let him get away with it. He just, she says, Mary then went to her service and told them, whatever Jesus tells you to do, do it. How does she know this? Because she knows she has a real relationship. She knows that from day one when, they, when God asked her, she said, yes, whatever you ask, let me be your servant. She knows her son. She spent time with Jesus like we can. And we realize this isn't her going, being a mom going, I'm going to make my son do something. You guys, this came out of relationship. This came out of relationship. This is not a demand on Jesus. He's just letting her know, Mom, do you really, like, Mom, hey, I'm a mama's boy right here. So I get, he's going, Mom, I need, are you seriously want this right now? Because you know you can get it out of me. Come on. And that's another whole thing. We got to learn to make sure you know what you're asking for. Because God's moving on people's behalf. But make sure you have the relationship to keep going with it. Because a lot of people have asked for a lot of stuff, and then they go out, and it's a disaster. The nearby stood six stone water pots meant to be used for the Jewish washing rituals. Each one could hold about 20 gallons or more. Jesus came to the servers and servers instructed them, fill the pots with water right up to the very brim. Then he said, now fill your pitchers and take them to the master ceremonies. And when they poured out the pitchers of the master ceremonies to sample, the water become wine. Come on. Some of you need some water turning into wine in your life. I'm talking about the spirit of the Lord and the fire of God to come over you. But some of you actually just need a practical breakthrough in your businesses, in your world. Make sure you're saying yes and not just constantly coming with an invent- a, a, a list. I need this God. I need this God. I need this God. Come on. It doesn't work that well that way. It really doesn't. But when you spent time with him, that's why there's a scripture in the verses. It says, ask. Ask him and he'll give it to you. And everyone goes, oh, I'll ask for this and I'll ask for that and I'll ask for this house. No. That's, if you study the scripture, you actually have been having such a cultivated lifestyle of yeses and building relationship that you actually come in line with him. And then he desires to actually fulfill and because he knows what's best for you. Oh, come on, guys. It's interesting. When you, when you look at life as a process, you can relax a little more. Because he's not so worried about getting you way over here. He's worried. He's actually cons- consumed with loving you today. He's so excited. He, man, it's like our kids. I look at my kid. It's just like, I, I just want them to grow up well. But I'm not expecting them to turn 20 today. I'm not expecting them to also drive a car today. We're working on process. I get excited with little things. Man, but I, I want to be like my little daughter, Kezia. She'll do whatever I ask. She's so funny. I'll be like telling her things like this morning. She wakes up. It was early because we got up early. And I said, Kezia, you look tired. Go back to sleep. Oh, I'm tired? Okay. And went back to bed. But I want to live that with Jesus that I have such a relationship that he knows best for me. Right? Because she trusts me. It's the funniest things. Her birthday comes around and literally she'll tell me, she'll be like, Dad, I want this. No, you don't want that. Oh, I don't? 
Okay, that's because it's very expensive, but you don't know that. <laughs> but it's true. And also, some of them aren't things she should have. She keeps on asking for her dirt bike lately. If you know my daughter, she would crash really fast right now. But God knows, you guys. And he knows where you're at. I want to encourage you. This is an exciting opportunity to remind ourselves to give our yes again. Oh, okay. Um, well, we know what happens. The water turns to wine. I don't want to get, I want to keep going here. This is a pretty cool thing about Mary. Is that Mary kept on giving her yeses. So much so that she can trust that her son was always going to look after her. Because if you look right in, in John chapter 19, Jesus is on the cross. You guys, again, this wrecks me every time. If you put, just try to put yourself in Mary's eyes right now, your son is on the cross. The one that you said yes to, the one you've watched pour out, the one you've seen do miracles, the one that you saw as a kid, the one you raised, and he's sitting up there and you're confused because she doesn't know what happens three days later, you guys. We do because we read it. We need to remember and read scripture. It comes alive when you start not thinking you know the answer right away and think, Mary, what is it like? I, her dream, guys, in a lot of us, we carry our, our, the, our call or our dreams. And what was Mary's dream? Her son. And her dream is sitting there on a cross. Or stand, up there on a cross. And she had to say, the only way she could be standing there is saying, I believe I yes. I'm here, yes, I don't understand this. This is confusing. That's the many places where we're at. This is confusing. This makes no sense. And then he, what does he say? He takes time out of the experience of the cross, guys. If you study it, it was not a fun moment for him. I don't say that joke. Like, it wasn't. He, if you study it, the, the amount of air and everything he was trying to hold on to. But he says, Mary, Jesus' mother, was standing next to the cross along with Mary's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas. Anyways, and Mary Magdalene. So when Jesus looked down and saw the disciple he loved standing there with her, he said, Mother, look, John will be a son to you. You're confused right now, I can tell. I'm going to give you somebody to look after you right now. God is sending people constantly into your life to help look after you at your moment. But if you're so focused on yourself, you're missing it. It may not look like the person you think is supposed to help you. There's a lot of people, even, I know even in this church, some of the older ones, you know, is that they carry huge lives of experience. Pull on them. Ask them, what happened? How'd you make it through that? How'd you, how are you married for 60 years? No, you guys, because he's given us people. But we have to realize that he gave it to us for a reason. <sighs> mother, look, John will be a, a son to you. Then he said, John, look, she'll be a mother to you. It goes both ways, guys. God likes to, to us to be part of the equation. From that day on, John accepted Mary into his home as one of his family. The call of saying yes is what I call the simple gospel. I've been just studying this and just being with the Lord. It's simpler than you think. It's not getting so complicated in your thoughts. Say yes today. Say yes today. You sit down with anybody, even in business or any other form of thing, you'll, you'll find out their journey. A lot of us look and say, oh, they have that. It's so easy. I want what they have. But if you sat down and sat with them, I have some friends in business. I know their journey. Everyone's like, whoa, look what he has. Look at his stuff. And look what he can buy. Oh, you, you want to sit down and hear? You want to have the times where he had to say yes when it made no sense? It's not just ministry. It's lifestyle. Because some of us, our ministry is business. Some of our, our stuff is looking after children. Some of us are for school. Some, like, be the garbage man. You have to say yes. Some of our yeses, it's like a guy named David Spring in our church that he says yes when somebody needs the door opened up and he drives 15 minutes, opens the door and turns around. Some of our yeses are very practical, but those yeses open doors. I'm telling you, I'm not going to get into it, but I shared it at our school before. My, the, some of the greatest places I've ever experienced and moved in ministry is because I said yes to serve in places where people didn't want to serve. Because you can't out-give God. You can't out-yes Him. 
It says in 2 Corinthians 11.3, but now I'm afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's clever eyes, your thoughts may be corrupted and you may lose sight of the single-hearted devotion and pure love of Christ. That's your yes. It's the single-hearted devotion and pure love for Christ. Colossians 1, 4 to 6 says, For we have heard of your devoted lives of faith in Christ Jesus and your tender love toward all his holy believers. Your faith and love rise within you as you access all the treasures of your inheritance stored up in the heavenly realm. For the revelation of the true gospel is as real today as the day you first heard of your glorious hope. Now that we believe in the truth of the gospel, this, this is the wonderful message that's being spread everywhere, powerfully changing hearts throughout the earth, just like it has changed you. Every believer of this good news bears the fruit of eternal life, and they've experienced the reality of God's grace. You guys, the treasures you're making when you say yes, it's the realization of living for eternity. It's the realization that this world's going to pass. It's the realization that there's actually a heavenly realm. There's actually eternity. And that you're actually storing up treasures in heaven. Oh, but we don't see that, Kevin. That's hard to believe. I want treasures here. That's wonderful. But I'm telling you, you got a lot more time in eternity. You have a lot more time, guys. We forget. We need to dwell on eternity a little bit more. We got to dwell on actually realizing it's bigger than even this. That when you lay down, when you lay down your life and we do things and you give your yes where you think it's something that is actually costing you something and then when you look back, you're like, no, it's, I want to do it, I would do it more if I could. People don't get on their deathbed and say, oh, I wish I would have made more money. No, they go, I wish I would have done more for Jesus. No, for real, it's not just the saying. We don't say that just to get you excited. It's true. We need to give our yes again. So I'm going to ask you guys, in your own heart, will you give a yes today again? Will you give a yes today? Will you give a yes to the call that he's saying today? Are you saying yes, then I'm going to go after more? Are you going to say yes? Will you actually take that matches? And will you let it spread, release fire on you? Will you let it actually change you? Will you allow it to actually burn you up enough that you become a sweet-smelling fragrance unto Him? Will you lay down your agendas? I'm telling you. We get in the way of God bringing you closer and do more stuff. You, he knows you better than you. He wants you to experience these stuff. He's saying, will you do that? Will you say yes today? Will you say yes today? <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I ask for your grace to come over everyone listening and watching right now. That there would be, Lord, this is what we would call a, a, a yes altar call or a yes that's just standing up and saying, I'll do it again, God. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to want to be lit up again. I'm, uh, I want to say yes when I don't understand. I want to say yes and I'm going to walk on water. I only got through half my message. My, head, rest of the, my next part is going through Peter's life. Maybe I'll get there someday. But he's, they, they say yes and yes and yes. These disciples had to say yes, guys. We are all disciples. And when he says, come follow, it's a journey. And so, Lord, we just pray right now. We thank you for today. We thank you that the kingdom of heaven is here today. And as, as we say yes, Lord, I can feel just heaven come in. I feel your presence come in. The more we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, have your way. We want to be like Mary. Yes, Lord, whatever that looks like, do it. Whatever it looks like. Whatever it looks like. Some of you guys have to say no matter what, it looks like my, it looks like my dream's dead. COVID screwed my dreams. Say yes again. Give me your yes no matter what it looks like. It'll make it better. Lord, our yes to you, Jesus. And I just want to speak to all those who are watching right now. If you don't know Jesus, the first yes is the best. <laughs> and it gets better after that. But yes, your first yes. Why? Because you're going to get to know the Son of God. You're going to get to know the King of kings and Lord of lords. But I'm telling you something right now. It's not easy. If you choose to say yes, the yes of saying, God, I want you to come into my life. I want you to take over. I want to give you everything. Yeah, it's dying to oneself. It's dying to oneself. But it's a choice 
for eternal life. It's a choice to experience his love. It's a choice, you guys. Come on. Jesus talks about it. Oh, time-wise here. Um, John 12, 23 to 26. He replied to him, Now is the time for the Son of Man to be glorified. Let me make this clear. A single grain of wheat will never be more than a single grain of wheat than it, unless it's dropped to the ground and dies. Your yeses are a lot of dies. You lay it down, guys. And then he says yes again. And you say yes again. Because when it sprouts and produces a great harvest, all because of one grain dead, the person who loves his life pampers himself will miss true life. Come on, guys. But when you, the one who detaches his life, the ones that say yes over and over again from this world and abandons themselves to him, he will find true life and enjoy it forever. Your greatest adventure is in your yes. Your greatest adventure is choosing again today. I'm giving it again. I'm going all in. You'll find true life and enjoy it forever. If you want to be my disciple, follow me and you will go where I'm going. And if you truly follow me as my disciple, the, fa the Father will shower his favor upon your life. So Lord, we just thank you. As we close today, as we close today, God, I pray for your grace to come over. Lord, that this is a word of encouragement. This is a word of saying, it, we can do it. This is a word saying, come up here, come up higher. This is a word saying, oh, trust me, people. God's saying, trust me. The fire is good. The burning is good. The presence of God is good. So right now, we just thank you, Lord. Bless everyone watching. In Jesus' name, amen.